This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and I'm doing some river lessons. If you want to follow along with this lesson on how to increase and make the swatch, what I have done is, is about a dozen rows of Knit One Pearl One ribbing on a one-by-one one needle arrangement. And to do an increase, I need to introduce you to a different tool that you probably have in your ribber things. This is called a seven weight because it's shaped like a seven and it has a loop on the bottom that you can hang a weight on. The weight goes on it like this. And the seven weight goes between the beds and holds a weight on the edge of the stitches. And you virtually always need the seven weight if you're going to increase along the edges of your ribbing. Let's start by increasing one stitch on each side and for that I've zoomed in very very close to the right hand side. I'm just bringing up the next needle. Since this is knit one pearl one ribbing the next needle is this pearl stitch on the ribber and I'm going to go ahead and knit from right to left. I didn't wrap this needle or do anything special with it. When I knit it from right to left the carriage put a loop over that needle. And now I'm going to hang that seven weight hanger. Here's the hanger and I bring it up in between the needle beds like this and then I use the loop on the bottom of it to hang the weight. Now I'm going to switch to the left hand side and do the same thing. I'm zoomed in on the left hand side to increase on the left I'm bringing up the next needle and I'm knitting back across. When I knit it back you can see that the carriage laid yarn in that needle and then I'm getting my seven weight and another small river weight and I'm going to put a little bit of weight on this left hand edge of the knitting. Okay. Now, once my weight hangers are on, I can knit a few rows before demonstrating the next thing. Now I want to do another increase on the right, so I bring out the next right stitch, which is on the main bed, and I knit across. Then I get the seven weight from a uh, weight hanger from underneath, and I just pull it to the right so it comes out of the knitting, and then I just speed it up in, in between the beds so that now it's hanging on the stitch is a little bit farther to the right, including this one that was just created. You can do a full fashion increase in Knit One Pearl One, and this is probably the best thing to do in a whole lot of situations where the increases are going to show. The increases are going to show that you want them to look nice, and the full fashion increases always look better than the ones where you've just added a stitch out on an edge. And what I've done is I've moved the last two stitches onto two needles farther out, leaving an empty. On the ribber I do the same thing. I catch the last two stitches by transferring them onto a transfer tool. And then I just go over and put them on the next two in the needle arrangement. This one and this one. Now once I've done that, I need to fill in this empty needle and this empty needle. And what I like to do is drop the river. My river will drop a little bit for one click and a whole lot more if I do two clicks. And then I get my double eye transfer tool and I pick up the heel of the nearby stitch on the opposite bed to fill in that empty needle. This one, and then for this one, I think this is the closest heel right here. So I just grab that and I fill those in. Put that in there and on. And then bring the river back up so it's fully back in position. And then I can continue to knit and that will give me a sample that shows what a full fashion increase looks like. Another way to increase 
if I'm dealing with a situation where I have tuck stitches or slip stitches and those are very likely to drop a stitch is to e-wrap on. So you bring out the needle that you want to increase onto and you simply e-wrap it. And in the case of a tuck stitch, I actually like to bring out two at a time. But for this plain knitting, I can certainly do that. And just e-wrap. Again, the seven weight is great for getting a little weight on the stitch because, watch, I can just put that, that weight hanger right where I need it to be. There we go. And it'll weight it, and I could go ahead and knit. Now I want to show two methods for casting on several stitches over on one end of the knitting. Now what if I want to cast on several stitches right here? The first thing I need to do is have the carriage on the opposite side of the knitting. The second thing that I need to do is bring out the five stitches. Three on the main bed and two on the river. Now, when I bring the carriage back across, it's going to lay yarn in every one of those stitches. Look at the zigzag row that was created when I came across and I had an additional five needles selected. Now, to put some weight on those five needles, and if you don't put the seven weight hanger here, you're going to discover that this drops and makes a mess. To go ahead and put some weight on these stitches, I'm coming in behind this last one and just hanging the hanger there. And now I can proceed with knitting and it should be okay and not drop those stitches. Now suppose I wanted to cast on six more stitches over here using another method. And this method is the E-wrap cast on. I'm going to begin by getting the yarn and holding it out of the way and bringing out three stitches on the main bed and three stitches on the river. And I have the wrong stitches. Let me get the right ones. Got to stay in my needle arrangement. Knit one part. I bring them all the way out to hold position and then I do the E-wrap cast on that I demonstrated earlier. It's in the E-Wrap Cast On River Lesson. Now this is a really good secure cast on when I need several stitches at the end. After I've done that, I knit back. And I'm getting the other seven weight. I'm leaving, since I've been adding only to the right side, I want to leave that seven weight that I had over here. It was holding this group. Now I'm going to put this other seven weight hanger here to hold this group and knit a few more rows, take the sample off, and show you. I have cut the yarn and I'm just running across to grab the sample. Here's that sample with all those different increases that I just made. And first of all, here are the increases made with a simple increase where I just put out an additional needle. It makes a hole, but you could do your seam inside the hole. You'll have to go diagonally across the ribs of the knitting to do that seam. Here is the full fashion increase. Let me pull it down a little bit so that it shows. And you can see that an additional rib of of ribbing appears in between two existing ribs. That one's very nice looking when it's made up and is a preferable increase for garments, especially where the ribbing um, increases will really show. And then here are the two cast-on increases. This first one, which I'll pull down a little bit, is the one where I put out the needles, let it lay down a zigzag row and knit them. And the second one, which looks a little better, is the E-Wrap cast-on. Both of these cast-ons are secure and they won't unravel, but the E-Wrap cast-on looks a little better. So here are all kinds of increases that you can practice on your own in ribbing.